Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the void. I'm player one, and welcome back to what uh, may be the last episode of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. We have finished all the mini games. We have finished all the main puzzles. The only things left, besides the um, the time travel ticket, which requires um, unwound future, unbound future, whatever the third one is. We, yeah, we can't do that yet. But we can do these houses. Uh, just a couple more bonus puzzles. Same as uh, first game. So, let's just go. The Musician's House. Sammy, what do you got for me? Oh, shit. Ah, oh, great. Okay, let's see what Coast to Coast is. Give this one a try. Seventy pick. Oh, good lord, what is this? A woman boards a non-stop flight leaving Los Angeles at noon and arrives in New York City at 8 p.m. The next day, the same woman leaves New York at noon and flies back to Los Angeles. The flight is unaffected by jet streams and takes the same amount of time to reach its destination as it did the previous day. The time difference means it is always three hours earlier in New York than in Los Angeles. Can you figure out what time the plane arrives back in Los Angeles? Also, what's 24-hour notation? Hmm. Okay. 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 Oh, I hate time zone shit. I can't- I can't fucking figure this out. She leaves LA at 12, gets to New York at 8 p.m. Time difference, three hours. Um, three hours earlier. Okay. Okay. So it's 12 in LA. She makes it to New York at 8 p.m. But if it's three hours earlier, that means it's 11 p.m. in LA. Right? Right. So that's... 11 hours. That's, that's 11 hours, right? Right? Okay. So then she leaves at 12. And gets back to LA. But if it's three hours early, that means it's actually nine in LA. And then, after the 11 hours, it would be 8. So is it just, is it 11 hours? Uh, what time the plane arrives back? 11. Let's see if this works. Of course not. Of course. Okay. I did this wrong. Because when it's noon in LA, it would be nine in New York. So then if it's then eight at New York, that time difference is. So if it's nine. No, that's still, that's still, that's still 11 hours. What is 24 hour notation? Is it like, is it like this? So then... 11... Oh, good, good heavens. Okay, so, actually... The flight is five hours. I don't know where I was getting that. The The flight is five hours, right? So, at, at noon 
in new in LA, it's oh, it's it's a three hour difference, so it's it's a five hour flight. So then, if we were to do that and do that whole thing in twenty four hour notation, which is l stupid, it's fourteen. Hmm, let's see oh this one. no. Cake. I'm going to suffer, aren't I? Yeah, there's, there's all, all that, that, eh, eh. Oh boy. One extra block. Another seventy. The diagram below shows a structure made of twenty-eight blocks. Of these blocks, twenty-seven form a neat larger cube, and on top of that, sinks sit a single block poking out above the rest. Below this diagram sits those, 20, say, those same 28 blocks, but this time the chunk has been separated into five chunks. Tap the chunk, A through E, that contains the single block that sat on top of all the others. Assume that all five chunks fit together as shown and can't be rotated from their current orientation. Um, okay. I think it's C. I think it's C. Let's see. Consider this puzzle solved. Okay. Um. It might be A. It might be A. Consider this puzzle solved. It's not A. <sighs> okay. Is it B? Consider this puzzle solved. It's B, okay. And there we have it. Not really hard, but there there we go. Yeah, B goes on top. It's not the bottom. There yeah. That one wasn't that bad. Brilliant. And now we have disappearing act six. Why are there six of these? 99 pickle rats! Good fuck! Oh, good heavens. Why? 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 The whole board is filled. <laughs> this is going to take forever. And no, I have not gotten better at these as time has gone on. It's still, it's just... Ooh! Yeah, okay. 
This is going to take forever. All right. Duh, 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 dink. Please, no more peg solitaire. Please, no more. I don't like getting pegged. Oh. Nicely done, my boy. Here we go. Musician's house. Done. Now, the tea master's house. First, the scholar's life. Been a while since we were in Dropstone. All right. The following words are written on a famous mathematician's grave. Following the sixth of my life I spent as a child, I spent a twelfth of my life as a young man. Then a seventh of my life later, I got married. Five years after I was wed, I was blessed with a child, but sadly, he only lived half the time I was alive before passing away. Today, four years after his death, I too will depart from this world. Can you use these words to figure out how many years the mathematician lived? Okay. Well... This is gonna- oh boy, this is gonna be a whole thing. Okay. Well, we can start with nine, because he says five years and four years. So, we can start with nine years. We can at least know that. But now then... Sixth of my life I spent as a child. Okay, I'm busting out the calculator. Here we go. Now then. Sixth of my life spent as a child. So. What's something that could be divided by sixth cleanly? A twelfth of my life as a young man. So, the time he spent as a young man has to be half of the sixth he spent as a child, right? That's how fractions work, right? So, by that logic, I think it has to be an even... I don't think it has to be an even number, but I would barely, very appreciate it if it was. Alright, I'm just gonna start trying numbers. So, let's try 40 divided by 6. N no, that's a, that's a decimal. Okay. Let's try... What would divide by 6 cleanly? Okay, 42 divided by 6 is 7. So, that makes sense. Twelfth of my life as a young man. So then... Oh boy. You know, there's probably a whole, a whole thing, a whole thing to figure this out, but I just don't have the mental capacity for that. I'm just gonna start putting stuff in. Like, in all honesty. Let me just do 50. Just leave it to me. Let's do 60. Just leave it to me. Why they have to do stinky math? Okay, I think we can conclude that it has to be a number that cleanly divides, right? Right? I would I would assume. Because otherwise it'd be some messy stuff. So what can cleanly divide by 6, 12, and 7? I'm just trying numbers here. 80... No. 82. No. 84. 
84 divided by 6 is 14. So then 84 divided by 12 is 7. 84 divided by 7 is 12. Is it, is it 84? Is it 84? Is it 84? That's not a fucking 9. That's not a 9. Eighty-four. Just leave it to me. Splagoinkin. All right. Maiden's apprentice strikes again. I hate you for giving me math, but there you go. He was eighty-four. All right. Interesting enough, a, a puzzle very similar to the one you just solved is said to be written upon the headstone of the grave of Diophantus. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. There's that one. Quite nice. Now we have letter calculations. Again with the calculations. Yeah. <sighs> Math is not a puzzle. If you take the problem, 11 times 11 equals 121, and replace the ones with A's and the twos with B's, you get AA times AA equals ABA. Using that same replacement idea, you can also generate AA times AA equals BBCC. New values may or may not have been assigned for each letter. Can you figure out what A, B, and C equal in the above equation? See, this seems... this seems easy to do. This seems easier than the last one. So obviously A is not still 1, because it, it's, it's different. And it's a 4. It's a four-digit thing. So... Can't be 22. It could be 33. Actually, no, it can't, because it is 1,089, which, you know. So then let's do 44. No. Let's try 55. No. Let's try 66. No. 77. Um, no. Let's try 88. It's 88. Okay. A is 8. B is 7. And C is 4. Because 88 times 88 equals 7,744. Beautiful. Give me more like that. Maiden's apprentice strikes again. Indeed. Top notch. And now, super pancakes. Gotta, gotta go back to the pancakes as well. 99? Oh, good heavens. Yuck. Yuck, man. Wh why? Why? Good lord. Oh, this is going to take forever. Yeah, this is gonna take forever. Oh boy. Little update. I've got the second to last one moved. It, it, we're still, we're still getting there. I have moved the bottom. Now it can only get easier. Second piece moved. Okay. Almost there. I think I can... I can resume fully now. These just take... four... ever. 
these just goodness but there's a certain pattern to them once you get to the to the near end that makes them easy to get it's just a lot of recursion there you are god damn let's see if this works maiden's apprentice strikes again Huh. <sighs> Scrumptious. 127? I don't care. Alright, and that's the Tea Master's house. So we should only have nine more puzzles. Let's go. The Animal Lover's house. Hello, Macaron. No. No. <laughs> I knew. I knew there had to be at least one, but I didn't want it to be true. But not yet. Let's do 500 pearls for 70. Oh boy, here we go. Another word problem. A magician charges a traveler with a task. Take a certain number of pearls out of a bag of 500. This number, when divided by any number, 2 through 7, always produces a whole number if you remove one pearl before dividing. Bring me this number, and all the pearls are yours. The number of pearls the traveler takes from the bag doesn't produce a whole number when one pearl is removed, and the remaining pearls are divided by four, but his number meets the other conditions. How many pearls did he take from the bag? Okay. The number doesn't produce a whole number when one pearl is removed, and the remaining pearls are divided by four, but his number meets the other Conditions. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't work when it's divided by four, but it works with every other one. All right, let's try. 250 divided by 4 is wrong. By 2, it's a whole number. By 3, no. So it's not 250. 275 divided by 4. Okay, divided by 2. No. How the hell am I supposed to find the number? There are so many, there's so many possibilities. Well, hang on. If it's... If it's not when divided by four, then I don't think it can be. Okay. It can't. Never fucking mind. I don't know. I don't know what the hell I'm looking for here. When divided by any number two through seven, always produces a whole number. If you remove one pearl before dividing. Hang on, I'm stupid. So let's try like 289. I don't, I don't know how the hell I'm supposed to figure this out. What the hell? All right, I think I figured this out way better there's not that many options because in order to divide by two and divide by five cleanly this has to end in a zero so it has to be like a 50 a 60 somewhere along those lines so i can just go through those and see if three is divided by them so like 90 okay 90 divides by two 90 divides by three 90 does not divide by 4, so let's try 100 does not divide by 3, let's try 110 does not divide by 3, 120, 120 divided by 3 is 40, that divides by 4, that divides by 5, that divides by 6, it does not divide by 7, god damn it! 
So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep doing that until I find something that works. All right, 150 does not divide by four. Oh, this is so annoying. All right, hang on. Nope. Uh, oh, 180 almost worked, but no. All right, let's try 210. No. Let's try 230. N no. Wait a minute. Let's try 240. No, I. It's seven. Seven is the one that messes us up. Messes, messes it up, because that that never, nothing nothing divides by seven. Oh good heavens! I just, I don't understand. I don't understand. Nothing divides by seven. Wait, hang on. Wait, I think I may have found it. Divide by two. Divide by three, divide by four, divide by five, divide by six. I've found the number. It's the magic number of 420. Of course it is. Okay, so 420 divides by all of those. So he wants 421. Okay. So the magician wants 421, but the traveler hmm. doesn't produce a whole number when one pearl is removed and the remaining pearls are divided by four. This number meets the other conditions. So, oh man. So now I have to find the whole number that does all of that, besides four. It's 211. God, that... <sighs> that was too much. That was too much calculator. This works. Why? Why? That was almost too easy. Jesus. <sighs> there it goes. God. Angles in a box. Oh no. In the cube below, in the center of three sides of the cube, are dots A, B, and C. Lines connect the dots. How many degrees is the angle A, B, C at the point where lines A, B, and B, C meet? This refers to the internal angle, of course. Ha! Huh? A, uh, excuse me. What? Ninety? Is it? Is it ninety? Just leave it to me. Of course not. It can't be that simple. What the hell are you showing me here, game? You're giving me nothing to work with. I'm just looking at a random ass angle. I don't. Uh... What? What? How do you, how do, how am I supposed to, what? hundred, I don't fuck, I don't fucking know. It looks obtuse to me. Just leave it to me. No, no, give me one, give me one. Visualization, the three points are each in the center of the sides of a regular cube. That's why I did 90. Is it 180? 
That's definitely not an eight. Just leave it to me. Of course not. What the hell is this? The three points are in the middle of the side in regular cube. Think about the other center points. What would happen if you continued connecting center points in this fashion? Get a diamond. You'd, you'd get a diamond. I don't know what the... Two seventy. Just leave it to me. I don't know angles like that, man. Hexagon, the internal angles of hexagons. I don't know the damn angles of a hexagon. Who do you think I am? 120, what the f- Just leave it to me. That was stupid. No, that one was stupid. Maiden's apprentice strikes again. Hell no, get the hell out of here. Stupid ass puzzle. That's just, oh, do you know the, the angles of a hexagon? No, of course I don't. And now I have to suffer with a goddamn sliding block puzzle. Because of course I do. Oh wait, no, hang on. Wait. This doesn't seem that bad. Hang on. All right. Scramble labyrinth. Tunnel segments of each piece must meet up with tunnel edges of adjoining pieces. The only times tunnel segments can lead outward without touching other segments are the start and goal. Tunnels can't dead end at walls otherwise. Oh. Okay. What is... What is that? I don't know what that is. And does that mean the wall? What are you... The, this looks just kind of weird. I'm not sure the way I'm supposed to make this. I think I see what the start should be. I think this should be the start. And then this one? And then probably this one in the dead center, right? Nah, I don't think that's right. Maybe it should be this one in the center. No, it has to, it has to be this one in the center. It has to be that one. But then the only ones that could be the start is this one or this one. So I guess let's let's try that. I don't know what the what that is. The J? Is that a J in there? I think 
I think now you have you have that right right the hmm. I think it I think it goes like that. Again, I hate sliding block puzzles, but at least this one doesn't seem so bad. Oh, good. I, okay, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Okay, this this looks pretty good, right? The only question is. Okay, I think this part needs to go here. Yeah, yeah. Wait. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Then this needs to go here, this needs to go here, and then this needs to go here. Okay. I think I have it. Nah. Shit, then I have to do this. Okay. I just need to get these two. Put that there. How did... How did those... Okay. Oh, I have it. There you go. Boom. Alright, I would say that one not as egregious as the other ones. Okay. There we go. I will say, game, you finally get got one sliding block puzzle I don't mind. All right, the sweetheart's house. No, not the damn night again. Eight cards. Oh, here we go. These cards numbered one through eight can be used to make two multiplication equations. One is given here. Can you think of the second one? So I have to use each digit, one through eight, and I have to times a three digit by a one digit in order to get a four digit. Busting out the calculator again. Okay. Well, let's just try one, two, three times four. No, let's try. Well, obviously the times can't be one. So at least there's that. Uh, three, four, five times two, no. Four, five, six times two. Five, six, seven times two is one, one, three, four, so it's not that. And then six, seven, eight times two. No, it, it almost had it. Six, seven, eight times two is one, three, five, six. 
So it's lit it was literally two off. Like, let's try six, seven, four times two. No. Six, seven, one times two. No. I think I think it's around around there is right. I think I think around there is right. Okay, after some calculations, I found it to be what what was it? It was It was 582 times 3 is 1746. Again, a lot of these are just do the calculations. I guess that's 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 just annoying. Maiden's apprentice strikes again. I don't want to have math in my game. Ew. The number cycle. Okay, it's like some Fibonacci thing. There's a pattern to the cycle of numbers. What number should go into the space with a question mark? 4 to 16 to 37 to 58 to blank to 145 to 42 to 20 to 4. Well, I don't think that's Fibonacci. Okay, well, 4 times 4 is 16. But then how do you get from 16 to 37? How do you get from 16 to 37? Hmm. Well, from 20 to 4, that's... Divide by 5. From 42 to 20... I hmm. Hmm. Okay, I've got this. Four plus twelve is sixteen, then plus twenty one is thirty seven. But then no thirty seven plus twenty one is fifty eight. And now, now I've lost it. What the hell is this? All right, y'all. I'll be honest. There was no way I was getting this. It's 89, and you want to know? You want to know why? You want to know why it's 89? Here's here's why. This is this is just this is just oh. Here goes. I'll be honest. I'll be honest when I'm stupid. Here's here's why. Here's why I would have never gotten this on my own. Square each digit in a number and then add the values together. No one was thinking to do that. Square each digit? In what realm is that a place your brain will go to figure this out? That is so... that is... that's not challenging. That's not clever in any way. That's just stupid. Uh, and now I gotta do another one of these. Oh, Knight's Tour 4, the whole goddamn chessboard. 
Y'all know how this works. I'm just gonna be back. All right. And hopefully, since that's the full chessboard, there's no more of those. Huh. That was almost too easy. Shut the hell up, Luke. All right. And that's the sweetheart's house, and now the puzzle doctor's house is available. The last one, hello, Dr. Schrader. The last three puzzles. Let's hope they're good. Collins score. All right. 99 figure rats. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Four students took a test where every possible, where every question had two possible answers, A or B. Each question was worth 10 points for a total of 100 points. The students' test results were posted as seen below, but the teacher forgot to tally Colin's score. Colin was heading to the teacher's office when Mary called him back, saying they could figure out his score using the results from the other tests. Can you figure out Colin's score? I mean, probably, but good lord. Okay. So. Mary has 70, Dan has 50, Lisa has 30. So that means seven of Mary's is right, five of Dan's are right, and three of Lisa's are right. Now, is it too much to hope that they all have the same questions right? Like, Lisa has three of Mary's right, and not three different ones? Maybe? Hopefully? Please? Okay, well... I would like... Oh man, this is gonna suck. Okay. Well, each of them have... Literally each of them have B for the first one. Mary has B for the second one and the other two don't, so B might be right for the second one. They all have three as A. Mary has B for four. What the hell is the thought process here? I would like to know which ones they have wrong. Why wouldn't you say which ones are wrong? Ugh. By a lot, and I mean a lot, of trial and error, and blah blah blah. It's 60! Uh, Piece of cake. No, it wasn't. Look at that. That's just... Huh. Please, please give me something fun. The card tournament. Oh, only an 80. Okay. And we have another word problem. Some people meet for a round-robin card tournament, what? where every person plays every other person once. Wallace has to leave after only a few hands, sitting out the remainder of the tournament. A total of 59 hands are played at the tournament. How many hands did Wallace play before leaving? The card game in question is a two-player game, and no person played with the same opponent more than once. No one sat out any hands besides Wallace. Eh? All right, well, there were... I think I, I can assume there were 12 people at the tournament. Uh, Wallace did four hands. Here goes! 
that one was more just thinking really hard. I there's there's all that all that math. I hate math. Jesus. Finally, the last puzzle. We solved the Elysian box, but now we have to solve the diabolical box itself. It's a different one. Here we go. 99 Picarats. <laughs> and of course! Of course! Because why wouldn't it be? Because why wouldn't it be? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this bullshit. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Why? Why? Look at this janky ass shape. Oh. How the hell am I even supposed to begin to solve this? Ugh. Ugh. This sucks. This sucks. As the last puzzle in the game... Y'all, why? You can't like sliding block puzzles that much. You just can't. Oh. I don't even know how to begin with this. Like, I... You've heard me say multiple times throughout this entire series, and you're gonna... You're gonna hear me say it more. Sliding block puzzles like this one are the worst. Don't do them. Do not put them in your game. Do not put them in anything. They're horrible. I hate them. I'm, I'm not even going to give it the satisfaction of getting its damn screen time. I'm solving this right now. I'll be back. Stinky ass sliding block puzzles. Swear to God, never want to do one of these ever again. Ugh. Just leave it to me. There, it's over. Yuck. Piece of cake. Five thousand five hundred pickerettes is the total. That's all the pickerettes. There you are. Commendable. Congratulations, you've successfully solved every puzzle available in the diabolical box. Uh, I've already done the Wi-Fi puzzles too, so don't even worry about it. And with that, it seems that you've completed every puzzle in the game. Congratulations! It's clear that you possess an aptitude and passion for puzzle solving that is equal to my own. Look, Professor! A new page of characters has been unlocked in the profile section! Indeed it has, Luke. That's a gift from us to our friend, the player. You heard the professor. Have fun with those. New profiles? Eh? Alright, well, let's see here. All that's done, let's go to Top Secret. We got profiles, art, music, voice, movies. And, you know, that. So, let me look at the other stuff first. Uh, we got, um, Trader. We got that. One. Biggie cheese. Yeah, so we got we got all these. So that's um that's good. Huh. Only ten in the whole game. Alright, and then we got you know all the music. Iris. Hmm. Ooh. Yeah, you know, got all those. Got all the voices. Maiden's apprentice strikes again. This should do the trick. Oh, lovely. You're awake. 
It's been far too... But I'm afraid it's too late now. I've been so wrong. We've got literally every voiced line, it seems. Wait, Dr. Schrader. But I must confess that my curiosity is oh, simply yeah. overpowered. Yeah, yeah. Look at me. I'm fit and sassy. Woohoo. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, you know, all the movies. So, who did we unlock in the profiles? Uh, the profiles, of course, you know, all the people. They, you, you know them, though. You know them. There's no, no need. I forgot that Mr. Anderson existed. There, there he is. So, um, we got all the Dropstone and Full Sense people. You know? Makes sense. And the train. Now, this is actually the last page before that. Before we finished. So, what is this final page that we unlocked? Pu oh! Oh! All these guys! Okay. Puzzle Guy 1. Livens up puzzles with his endless energy and dashing mustache. Back in the day, he was quite athletic and popular with the ladies. He put on a few pounds since then, but still knows how to add flair to puzzles with his athletic poses. Uh, we got Puzzle Guy 2. I love this guy. The, the beard guy. The poster boy for all the members of the puzzle troupe. Uh, that's true. That's true. I uh, got Puzzle Guy 3. This is a, this is a rare one. We got Puzzle Guy 4. Mm-hmm. He's extremely intelligent. Mm-hmm. And we got Puzzle Guy 5. This is a little... Little guy. <laughs> and we got the Puzzle Gals. The Puzzle Gals, uh... Not really... Not really... Much to say there. We have Flora Incognito. Pretty cool. Anyone who knows her should have recognized her in an instant, but for some reason, neither Layton nor Luke saw through her disguise. I don't know why. We got Don Flora. This may look like Flora, it's actually Don Paolo. He's even got her walk down pat. Weirdo. Uh, Duke Harrison. Uh, he's dead. Uh, yeah. Winston. Winston is the Anderson family's devoted chauffeur. When seeing her off on her journey to Full Sense, one wonders if he felt a twins of, twinge of jealousy. However irrational, at Kyoto's decision to travel by rail instead of by car. I didn't know this was a man, okay. And the Leighton Mobile, of course you have to have it. Okay, it's cool that they gave little profiles to all the puzzle people, that's cool. But, uh... Okay. I think with that, we're done. We're done with the game. It's finally, it's finally over. Of course, there's one, there's one last thing, but when we eventually get to Unwound Future, I think it's called that, you know, we, no matter how much time passes between here and now, we still have to get at least four games done before we even have a chance to get there. So do not expect Unwound Future anytime soon. But when we get there, I will open that little that little thingy right there. What? Yes. Done it. All the stuff is done 100%. I did not think it would take me three hours to get all the bonus stuff done, but there, there you go. Three hour-long episodes of Layton, if you if you like that. Uh, yeah. Really, the the end the bonus puzzles they could have been better. A lot of those just made me annoyed. Some of them were fine, but others are just mm, mm. and of course they had to end it. The sliding puzzle. I will, I will never escape it. It's going to haunt me forever. Cause you bet your sweet bippy. It's going to be in the next game. I, kn I know it is. It haunts me so. But for right now, I am free. 
Leighton is done, he's put to bed, and he won't wake up for a good while. All right. And I will end it here. I've been player one. And I'll see you in something else. Bye-bye. And have a gentlemanly day.